all schools are important. But in northwestern New South Wales, in this small, isolated community, there is nowhere more crucial than the classroom. We're 80 k's from Lightning Ridge, we're 450 k's from Dubbo, and about 900 kilometres northwest of Sydney. A lot of the areas around us are farming areas, um, crops, um, sheep uh, and cattle. Um, there's not much of work opportunities in Gadooga, um, so that's why the school is extremely important within the community. Like every remote community, Gadooga faces its fair share of challenges. But one significant hurdle here has been overcome. Technology has changed the way this school and its community sources its drinking water. We have a proprietary product called a hydro panel and it is able to harvest water from the atmosphere and use energy from the sun to convert that into liquid and deliver it straight into a tap. The hydro panel technology has been developed in the United States over the past seven or so years. It came out of Scottsdale, Arizona, where some of the driest, harshest conditions in the world. Um, and scientists there were looking at the, the abilities of material to absorb water. So the core technology is actually a, a material that can passively suck water out of the air. So we use heat from the sun to create hot air and we use that to increase the dew point. So we effectively use material and heat to create clean, um, drinkable water from the air. Um, it comes out distilled and then we add in calcium and magnesium. So how exactly did that technology end up here, in this small, isolated outpost on the Queensland-New South Wales border? When we look at drinking water stress in Australia, it's a problem of remote and rural areas. And here in Gadooga is a great example of that. You've got remote Australia, particularly Indigenous Australia and rural Australia, still reliant on either no service and having and tanks and bores, um, or with service but having water that is nowhere near the quality of what we see in Sydney or, or Brisbane to drink. It only impacts about 2% of the Australian population. Regardless, unsafe, unacceptable and unreliable drinking water is the reality in hundreds of small, rural and remote communities. There are currently 36 New South Wales public schools without permanent access to safe drinking water that are instead reliant on bottled drinking water provided by the government. And there's a longer list, more like 200 schools, which when, um, when droughts come, when water gets more and more scarce, we see that quality of regional and remote towns uh, really suffer first. Rob Bartrop says it's not the government propping them up, but rather the isolated families themselves, parent-teacher groups or donors from the community. The places in the more hard-to-reach communities in the state uh, really suffer and we see much higher consumption of bottled water, we see more cost, more plastic waste and actually just a bigger gap to everyday life than what we see people growing up in urban areas. The solar-powered hydropanel system that went in here at Gadooga Central School in 2019 was part of a program supported by the former Liberal government piloting renewable drinking water technology. Systems like this one were installed across 10 New South Wales schools. The 10 panels on this site can provide more than 50 litres of drinking water per day and have a storage capacity of up to 300 litres. Since the panels went in, it's had a big impact. This area, not unlike many remote regions, relies on bore water, which, while drinkable, is not always preferable. The bore water comes out of the bore uh, extremely hot and then is treated and also cooled down with the cooling tower up at the bore baths. And some people in the community don't drink the bore water, they'll drink just the um, bottled water. From an environmental perspective, relying on bottled water obviously isn't great. It's also expensive. And in Gadooga, like in many communities with reduced access to quality drinking water, there's also the problem of high consumption of sugary drinks, such as cordial or soft drink. We try and discourage students drinking soft drinks and Powerades and, and those type of sugary drinks. We can't stop it but we discourage it. 
Last year, a collaboration with the company Zip saw a chiller added to the system, which has also had a positive impact, especially over summer when Gadooga regularly experiences extreme temperatures. Summer is very hot. So we are averaging 40, 42 degrees a day. With the heat that um, we experience in here, like other communities that are around us, um, you know, if you're not hydrated properly, it, it leads to fatigue, it leads to, uh, can lead to sickness, and that can lead to staff not being at school, students not being at school, um, and that's why we, we really push to make sure that our students are hydrated. Anything that can help support these students at school is essential. Tommy Stanton is an administration officer at Gadooga. A past pupil himself, Tommy was born here and still fondly recalls a time when his town was at its best. There's been a big change over the years with Gadooga. Like back in our time, there was the, the, the main industry was the farms and uh, the shearing, a lot of shearing and um, there was a, used to be a lot of work, but there's very, very little work today. Small family farms that once surrounded Gadooga are no longer. And the larger farming operations that have taken their place don't generate as many jobs. I think a couple of years back there, we did a rough, rough account. We, I think we lost about uh, over 100 people in a 12 month period um, because of lack of work and uh, a few other issues. The school is working hard to give its students and their community a sense of hope for the future and optimism about what they can achieve. Supporting the teaching staff are six Indigenous tutors. So our tutors are born and bred in Gadooga um, and they, they work in the classrooms with our students and are a very important part of what we do here um, because they know how important it is to get an education and really push our kids to um, reach their full potential. Karen Lane is one of those tutors, providing a crucial link between the school, community and culture. It is a good community, like a, a, a small knit community. Um, we all know one another and we all look out for each other, so it is a challenge because the kids, they have to get out. Of, there's nothing, there's no um, work, much work in community, so we encourage them to go out. His mother smiled and shook her head. When you're a long way from most places, it's easy to fly under the radar. That's why investment in their school is so gratefully received. It is because then they said no that there's somebody out there looking looking out for them and giving them like that drinking water, that's it's a big thing. A sense of pride in your school is something all parents and teachers strive to enforce in their kids. And it's working here. What I like about it is all the cultural stuff that we do here. Like down in the woodwork room we make boomerang, clapstick, didgeridoos, amy collars, and we just sell them for um money so we can go away on excursions. Yes, that is Trace. Good reading. Obviously, the critical consideration for rolling out renewable drinking water technology such as this is cost. So the, the cost burden to build a solution like this for the equipment, you're talking in the 50000 plus dollars range, um, and that's going to give you a drinking water solution for 15 years. In terms of the lifetime cost of producing water using these 10 hydro panels, that figure is around 10 to 15 cents per litre. So you're looking at one twentieth of the cost of, of what bottled water costs, um, and yet much higher cost than what tap water costs in Sydney. But when it comes to really weighing up the cost, there is a bigger picture. The expense of buying bottled water in terms of cost of living pressures on individuals, households or even taxpayers needs to be considered as does the environmental cost when it comes to the staggering amount of plastic waste produced from bottled water. So far, the project has offset about half a million plastic drink bottles and provided good quality drinking water to 1,500 people in some of the most remote and vulnerable communities across the country. But to see it taken up more broadly will require change. Rob Bartrop says one of the key challenges to improving drinking water access across Australia is an all or nothing mentality from the government. In cities you get as much great water as you want for basically for free um, and if you can't reach that standard you're not served at all and you get nothing. 
He says while the business case for extending centralised infrastructure to small towns in remote places doesn't make sense, what does make sense is supporting innovation. The Australian government has committed to the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda, which includes a goal to achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all by 2030. But for now, as far as school water supplies in Australia, this hydropanel system will only be available at the 10 schools that already have it installed. The government has no plans to roll it out further. Water is still very much in the Roman era where it's about finding clean water and getting it to cities. I think we've got to think of new ways to find water like the atmosphere and new ways to deliver it. In this case, like leapfrogging infrastructure and actually delivering it at the point of demand. Systemic change can't happen overnight, but it can happen. Australia led the world in some of these technologies when it came to mobile phone networks, when it's come to renewable energy microgrids. So when you look at essential services, in many ways we're two thirds of the way there with great mobile telephone networks and great uh, remote energy systems. Water is the one that needs to take that step and improve outcomes. To do that though, it's clear it can't be left to the tiny minority missing out on a reliable and safe drinking water supply to solve the problem. I think we've got to think about all Australians and look at the disparities between the, the 600,000 Australians that aren't served by utilities um, and the sort of up to 2 million Australians who aren't drinking water from the tap. And really to push for schools to have the non-sugary drinks in there and to rely on this particular system. I think that it'd be great for every, every school.